At the beginning of the season, um, well, on the road to reconciliation. You know, we all do bad things, we all do good things. And um, clearly Lance has done plenty of bad things and so has Laurel, but you know, they seem to be able to, be able to forgive each other eventually. So the whole, you know, thing that Lance was holding on to with her not telling him about Sarah's death was obviously horrific for him to deal with. Um, the thing with that for Lance was that he didn't get to bury his daughter. That was the thing for him that was just killed him, you know, that he just couldn't get over. But um, he'll, uh, hopefully Laurel and Lance will work their stuff out. They normally do. So, I'm sure it'll be a bed of roses in no time. You say a lot of harsh things to Ollie. Do you think they're deserved? And when you see him on the script, you feel like, ooh, that was harsh? Or... Well, I was saying, it was really only two episodes of last season when I kind of, Lance kind of had it in for him. But yeah, he kind of was pretty uh, mm -hmm. uh, abrasive. Um, um, yeah, I mean, he, he, he got to spill his guts on that stuff, you know, and uh, he, he didn't feel so great about about all of it. You know, that was a betrayal, you know, again, you know, he trusted him and obviously from such a, um, uh, a vulnerable place, especially in season two, was it, where he was working uh, behind the scenes with the Arrow, you know, he's putting himself on the line there, you know, when he was demoted and everything, and he's, he's entrusted himself and his reputation in the Arrow an awful lot, and then for the guy to seemingly be going around, you know, banging arrows in the mayor and all the rest of it and not telling him about his daughter as well. You know, it was a lot for Glass to get over, so... Um, hopefully they'll have a... they'll get back to the cosy conversations of, you know, early season two. Because I kind of liked it when they are friends. I feel like they're a nice little odd couple, you know. Well, with Diggle picking up the mantle of the Arrow for this next season, kind of how does um, Captain Lance feel about that? Um... Well... Um, <laughs> um, it's hard to answer that question actually because it's not really touched upon in, I mean I can tell you how I would, how, yeah, how we would think about it is that, well, okay, the Arrow dude's gone and this is that other guy that I tried arresting last year along with Felicity Smoke um, and it, again, it's one of those things where it comes down to what's best for the city because Lance has obviously got his ethics, his, the law, um, system of justice which he tries to apply to but at the end of the day for him it's all about Starling City and you know what is best for that city and if these guys in the absence of Arrow team minus Arrow if these guys are going around doing the best they can um, then Lance has got to give them that you know and will you necessary brace, evil and will you be bracing for the city to be invaded come May of course uh, what was that line? Uh, it must be May. What was the line? Is that great? City is under, uh, under attack. Must City is under attack. Must be May. Um, <laughs> yes, I'll be bracing myself to say that in uh, April 2016. <laughs> that was a great line, though, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Mark Guggenheim, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> sort of a general question, but can you talk a little bit about um, what he has going on going into the new season? Just even at work or possibly involved with Team Era? Well, there's an interesting thing actually, there is a definitely a, a, a rather, at the end of, you know, during episode one there, it's revealed that there's a little bit of a dark element going on in Lance's life. Um, it will be perceived in such a way, um, but, and a rather surprising one, but born out of that for me in my mind is it's interesting how people will seemingly do bad things for what they believe is the right reason. So it just, you know, it's just what, it's all subjective, isn't it, as to what you think the right reasons are, what good reasons are. So um, there's a very interesting play by the end of episode one, we're like, Lance? Really? Oh! But whether we end up considering it good or bad is, you know, will be up to the, uh, up to the viewer. But um, there's a, a very poised, lovely poised situation with that coming up. So it'll be nice, actually. Nice. I was going to say, do you think that the line for Lance is the law? Or is what? Is the law. The law is that line of what's right. Well, like I said, he's, he's at it, you know, in the first season it was all, it was that line, you know, there's no, justice is always found within the law, you know, and he was so hard, he stuck by that so hard, uh, until the season one finale when he had to go and work with the Arrow with that earthquake machine and all the rest of it. Um, and that's the point which he suddenly went, well, you know what, it's the city that's most important and if I have to um, relinquish my own reputation, if I have to lose, you know, batter my own reputation as a result of decisions made that 
making them terrible in terms of working outside the law and getting demoted, season two and all that sort of stuff, then fair enough. But if the city is the thing that ultimately benefits, Lance will take the hit personally if the city benefits. Because, you know, the city, as Lance said, you know, the, the, his blood is in the city, the city's in his blood. Do you know what I mean? It's like that is the thing that matters the most after his daughters. So um, he'll do anything with the city, even if he ends up looking a dick for doing it. There you go. <laughs> Lance.